Hello friends, how did you feel on your first day at work? And how do you feel on a daily basis when you go to work? Usually, the employers have certain expectations from a prospective employee and they conduct interviews to find out who is the best candidate for the job, right? Today, we'll invert that question and ask whether the workplace is right for you or not. We do a variety of jobs, but what's common among them is this. Work is something which challenges you and pushes your mental and physical limits. So where there is challenge, there is stress and there is emotion. And how does our nervous system handle stress? We have something called autonomic nervous system, which evolved much before the thinking brain. The autonomic nervous system has two parts, the sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is activated in situations of danger or stress. It prepares your body to face the danger. It increases your heart rate, tones up your muscle, improves your vision and alertness, and basically it gets your body ready to fight or to run away. When the sympathetic nervous system is active, your body is said to be in the fight or flight mode. Flight means running away. The parasympathetic nervous system is active when there is no danger. This system promotes rest and recovery. It slows down your heart rate, relaxes your muscles, and aids digestion. These two systems constantly work in balance and they fine-tune your body's response to the challenges posed by the environment. Coming back to the workplace, which part of the autonomic system is likely to be active? Obviously, the sympathetic nervous system because work is a form of stress. And whenever you face a stress, you have to decide whether to stay on and fight or escape. Now, how to decide that? The answer depends on whether the stress in your workplace is a good stress or bad stress. Wait, what? Is there something called good stress? Yes. Good stress is defined by four things. Your work is clearly defined. You feel motivated and competent to do the work. Your leaders are approachable and communication is smooth. And lastly, there are clear boundaries between your work life and your personal life. Bad stress is just the opposite. There's no motivation, communication is absent, goals are not clear and your work life keeps intruding into your personal life. So if you experience good stress, that means your workplace offers you a healthy environment and you can decide to stay on and fight. And if you experience bad stress, you can decide to quit. Is it as simple as that? No. So far we've spoken only about stress, which is your responsibility or in other words accountability. The other half of the equation which determines emotion in the workplace is safety. And safety means both physical and psychological safety. So when do employees feel safe? They feel safe when people are treated with respect and not humiliated. They feel safe when the leaders show genuine empathy and interest in the welfare of their employees and there is mutual trust. This is where the work of Dr. Amy Edmondson, a Harvard researcher, becomes relevant. She created a powerful 2x2 two two matrix which wonderfully explains the relationship between accountability and safety in the workplace. So as you can see, when responsibility is high and safety is low, employees are fearful and that's the anxiety zone. When there is not much of responsibility and safety is high, people enter the comfort zone. In comfort zone, there is no stress, so productivity will decrease. When responsibility and safety both are high, the employees will be under good stress and they'll be more productive. This is the learning zone, which is the ideal zone for any organization to be in. Lastly, when responsibility is not much, but you don't feel safe, you tend to withdraw from active work and not take any risks. This is the apathy zone, which again is an unhealthy state for any organization to be in. A healthy organization tries to make sure that everyone is in the learning zone which is supposed to be the sweet spot. Now we may be wondering, what about rest? What about the parasympathetic nervous system? Yes, rest and recovery are essential and forward thinking organizations nowadays incorporate time for rest, meditation and even power naps because they know that emotional stability is directly related to productivity. What do you think? Which zone does your workplace fall into? Let me know in the comments and I love to hear your thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the bell icon for regular updates and share this video with friends who are interested in emotional intelligence. If you are interested in exploring the topic more, 
I'll give you links for further reading in the description. Take care and don't forget.